All right, guys, we're gonna try something a little different. Normally we're building crazy aircraft. If this is your first time here, this is a not normal video, but a lot of asked if we would take you along when we take out one of the helicopters or aircraft back into the backcountry. So I couldn't think of a better time since I've been gone traveling for months at work. I'm back in town. It's our anniversary. I hope you join us. We're gonna go see the backcountry, do some riding, hit Telluride, and we'll get back to work. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. <laughs> All right, guys. I've started the motorcycle mounts for Scrappy. Now, I'm actually gonna be able to handle full-size motocross motorcycles. For right now, I'm making brackets that are for electric motorcycles. They're a full motorcycle, but they're not like a motocross style bike. But Scrappy's wing can handle full-size gas-powered motorcycles. But most of the time, I think I'm just gonna haul electric. And I've got the solar panels on the top. So you can kind of see right here, this is the back area. And uh, I'm getting the inserts, quick releases to quickly install the motorcycles. Um, but I got to put it on hold because I got something way more important. It's mine and my wife's 29th year anniversary and how in the world she can put up with me <laughs> this long is beyond me. So thank you, sweetheart, for putting up with this workaholic. Um, so we're going to pause on this. I've got my friend Josh Kelson and Jason Sneed are being so kind. We're going to load up a bunch of electric motorcycles in the back of the trailer. They're going to drive them several hours out to a cool riding spot. Normally I want to fly the airplane and land and go riding and take them off. But for now, they're going to take the motorcycles out. Chandler and I are going to jump in the helicopter. We're going to fly a couple hours out, meet them up, go riding. And then we're going to take the helicopter from there, bounce across the high mountain deserts of Utah, and then over into the high Rockies of Telluride. Spend a couple of days in Telluride. And then the plan after that is to then jump back west into the low deserts and also high deserts of Moab area and land there and go play in Moab and then come back. So motorcycle in North Utah, Telluride, high mountains, and then we're gonna go do some exploring in Moab. So gosh, it's time to spend some time with my family. Most importantly, time with my wife on our anniversary, and then we'll get back to work. All right guys, right here, this is just east of our home in Spanish Fork, Utah. We're going to the high Rockies, the leaves are changing. It's the most beautiful time to fly. The temperature's perfect. Most of these mountains around here are 10 to 12,000 feet. So we got a quick hop over. We're gonna meet Jason and Josh, and we're gonna do some riding. We're just coming in here to land. Meet Josh, he's videoing as we approach to land. Right here where I'm touching down is a piece of cabin property. We bought five acres here, five acres on the other side of the runway. And at some point, we're thinking about putting a couple of cabins up here, at least one is a minimum. But if any of you are interested, maybe leave a comment. We considered maybe doing some small cabins that we could rent out to all of our pilot friends. So if we're not in town and we're not using it, which will be often, Maybe you guys would want to come out and land in the high mountains of Utah and go hit some of these amazing places. If you think you might want to do that, let us know in the comments.
All right, guys. So a lot of you have asked, and since this is our anniversary trip, the question we get was, how is it that we met? How did this cutie end up with this knucklehead? <laughs> it's probably the more closely worded question we get. So I'll let Chandra tell you a little bit how we met. Okay, well, it was right before our 18th birthdays and we had um, just graduated high school and we're dragging Maine. <laughs> kind of embarrassing. But we did that because we didn't have cell phones and whatnot. So anyway, we were dragging Maine and he pulled up to the side of my car and motioned for me to roll down the window because that's how you did it. Way that back, was like way a really nice then. car. It was a diesel <laughs> rabbit that blew more smoke than you could see through if you were behind it. He had modified it, of course, but it was fast and it was crazy. Anyway, so motion for me to roll down the window and I did. And he said, hey, do you have a boyfriend? And I just kind of laughed and said, no. And he said, well, do you want one? <laughs> and I giggled and he just said, well, pull over. I want to talk to you about it. And so I pulled over, but don't tell my mom. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not the best idea, randomly yeah, pull over for someone who asks. Yeah, probably. But, but he was cute, and so I pulled over, and we chatted, and ended up going on a date about a week later, because I had given him my phone number, and he didn't call me for a while, and then he saw me out again, and he said, but your number got washed in my pants and I can't, I... <laughs> in all fairness, this is a true story. So no cell phones, that's, that's how old we are. No cell phones, wrote it down and actually put it in my pocket and washed it and tried to read the numbers. I don't know how many people like dialed wrong, but I found her again and we figured it out and went on a date. We did, <laughs> and he was so sweet and so, so fun and just, I just love him, I'm lucky. <laughs> There you go, we officially met dragging Main Street like old people do, <laughs> <laughs> did. <laughs> okay, while we're recording, getting ready to go on our trip, if you heard noise in the background, I couldn't be more proud of my son Dylan working late at night on completely rebuilding and hopping up his twin turbo Mitsubishi 3000 GTV R4. R4. I knew it was something like that, VR4. Anyway, I'm, I couldn't be more proud of my son learning how to overhaul engines himself, rebuild it. I just noticed he put orange inside the front of it, which means the car is probably going to have some colors similar to Scrappy. <laughs> anyway, um, I couldn't be more excited. This is how I started doing cars. My old Volkswagen Rabbit. I don't know if I can find a picture. This is the first car I ever ripped an oil pan off, catching enough air to clear my friend in a parking lot. It was a great ramp behind the all a dollar store. So <laughs> don't rip off your oil pan, learn from your dad. <laughs> it's pretty up there, doesn't it? All right. Right here, this is amazing. This is high desert. Uh, most of the ground underneath us is about 5,000 foot elevation. Right here, we have a whole bunch of blue dirt that's really prominent around this area. I'm curious if any of you know what causes this bright tealish blue. Let me know what you think this blue is. All right, guys, this is one of the most beautiful canyons. We've been flying up a canyon the entire way, approaching from the west to east into Telluride. 
and it's unbelievable. And on the way down here, you can just see all the colors are changing. But right now, Telluride density altitude is 11,200 feet today, which is awesome. For those of you who fly helicopters or fixed wing aircraft, you'll re really appreciate the high density altitude. But with just my wife and I and partial fuel, we have lots of reserve to land at this high altitude. The air is really thin. This approach in is awesome. I can't wait to spend a couple of days here in Telluride. <laughs> We're just leaving Telluride and we've been hiking and relaxing and quite frankly eating way too much. I think I gained five pounds in two days. Some of the most amazing food in Telluride. So we're heading out. We're on our way now down to Moab. We'll go do some hiking, try and burn off some of this extra calories we put on, um, see some of the rocks of Moab. And then unfortunately the trip is getting close to an end. So let's spend some time in Moab and then we'll be heading home. Trip's wrapping up. We just finished. Quick stop here in Moab. Went and saw some of the sites, had some lunch, put a little fuel in. We got one more hour to get back home to Utah. So dang it, this is about the end of the vacation. We got to do have a beautiful flight. And then, you know the drill, <laughs> back to work. All right, guys, we just left Moab. Right here is the High Mountain Desert Book Cliffs. It's really a lot of fun flying. You gotta be a little more careful in the summer. You get some pretty good thermals. This west side is usually getting a lot of lift. The wind's from west to east. The east side has quite a few downdrafts. You gotta be really careful on these cliffs. We've had some unfortunate situations where people got down in them and had a hard time getting out. But uh, it's a beautiful sight home, and we're about an hour away from the green mountains of uh, northern Utah and back into our valley. All right, guys, that was awesome. Little getaway, spent some time with my wife. Absolutely a beautiful, perfect trip. It could not have gone any better. So I'm excited to be back though. I wanna to get to work on Scrappy. It's gonna to have to wait another week or two. I've got way too much going on at work. So I'm gonna to get to work on some secret projects. And then shortly after, we'll get right to work on Scrappy's motorcycle mounts. You know the drill, back to work.